Hi, I'm Gary Frenette, and I'm here again with Chris Costa, certified uh, fitness trainer. And we're going to do some general exercises now when you're uh, through with your therapy, feeling pretty well, and you want to engage in an exercise program you can take forward for your fitness. So Chris, can you show us some exercises you'd recommend that the generally healing patient would go ahead and do? Sure. The most important thing to remember before you start any program is that you want to start with light weights. You don't want to start too heavy and you want to gradually work up to about two to three times a week that you do these exercises. So the first exercise we're going to do is a basic bicep curl. I'm going to have Gary show you how to do it. You want to remember to always keep your elbows in towards your body and a slight bend in the knee and you want to try to pull in your abdominal area. The reason that we say that it's very important is so that you don't use your neck instead. So I want you to go ahead and just raise up slowly. Good. And back down. This is a basic bicep curl. You want to start with, depending on your strength level, maybe about five or eight pounds. It's very important to start lightly with these exercises. And I told you my abdominals were already pulled in, right? <laughs> yes. His abs are already pulled in. You want to do, starting out, about a set of ten. And then you want to just take a break for a second and take a deep breath. This gives the body the time to just your muscles to relax a second in between sets. And didn't you tell me an interesting statistic that about 80% of patients stop exercising because of an inadvertent injury during exercise? Absolutely. The reason most people stop is because they add too much weight in too fast and they end up injuring themselves, usually in about the first two weeks of exercise. So that's why we can't stress enough that it's important for you to start slowly and progressively with your workout program. And so we're also going to stress technique and Chris is going to show uh, some of the correct way to do these exercises so that you can avoid injury. This exercise is to strengthen the middle back area. It's called a basic back row. So Gary, if you just put the weights up in front for me and pull back and pinch your shoulder blades together. Good. And we're going to start with a set of 10 again. And you should really feel your shoulder blades pinching, is that correct? Yes. The reason I'm putting my hand back here is so that you can use that as a guide to make sure you pinch your shoulder blades. So when you're at home doing this exercise, make sure that you can really feel your shoulder blades pinching together. This exercise is for the tricep area, which is the back of the upper arm. So I'm going to have Gary turn for me, putting the weights behind you, okay? Again, making sure that you keep your knees slightly bent, abdominals pulled in. This one in particular, the one that usually people get wrong is that they end up not pulling their shoulders back before they start the exercise. So if you see Gary just pulled his shoulder blades back first, and then I just want you to push back whatever natural movement you can back to feel the triceps right here. Some of the common mistakes that people do um, are that they don't have the shoulder blades back and also they do a swinging effect. What Gary is doing is he's actually flexing his tricep muscle back here. Again, starting with a set of 10 would be good. And I think naturally you tend to let your shoulders roll forward. Uh, at least I do. At most people have poor posture up in the upper body, so you really want to force these shoulders back to try to get your shoulders back for po better posture. This exercise that we're going to demonstrate works the shoulders and the trapezoid area right up here. And Gary, what I want you to do is bring the weights together. It's very important. We went a little bit lighter on the weights here. It is very important to go a little bit lighter because this really can use the neck in the beginning. So what you're going to do is bring the weights together and I want you to bring the elbows up a little higher. 
good and then back down all the way and make sure like we said earlier keep the knees bent slight and also abdominals are pulled in good back up to the chest and back down some of the common mistakes that people do with this exercise is they don't go high enough with the elbows. The elbows should be higher than the shoulders and they usually do too much weight. It's very important to start with a lower amount of weight here. Make sure that you keep the weights together if you can. There you go. And why would you do that? Just because it's a smoother movement and I you don't see. have the weights and then you get a little bit more of an equal movement between the two shoulder areas. This exercise is for the pec muscles and I'm going to have Gary lie back for me. If at home you don't have an incline bench, you can certainly just use a regular bench and just lie all the way back down. I'm going to have Gary bring his weights up and you want to chest press up, bringing the weights up, and you want to make sure to bring them in a little bit and then back down to about a 90 degree angle and then up. Good. An important thing to remember is to try not to let your elbows go too far down past your chest level. Make sure to keep your abdominals nice and tight and try to relax, relax your neck and shoulders. This exercise is for the rear shoulder. This is an area that a lot of people forget to work out. So it's important that you work your, the back of your shoulder. This will help with your posture, pulling the shoulders back. So what you can do is, again, if you don't have a bench at home, you can certainly sit on a chair and do this or a stability ball, but you're just gonna sit down on the edge of the chair or the edge of the bench, and you're gonna lean forward, taking your hands, palms towards one another, and just bending the elbows and pinching the shoulder blades as you come back up and back down. It's a really good idea to start this exercise with no weight in the beginning just because there's quite a bit of weakness in the rear shoulder if you don't work it out regularly and you slowly graduate to heavier weights as the weeks go on. I'm going to have Gary show us with some weight. Good, leaning over as far as you can, palms towards one another. Good, bringing it up and back down. Good. Do you try to hold it when you're all the way up like this or? Just for a second. Okay. This exercise that I'm going to show you is called a squat. It's a very basic exercise that you can do which will really work all areas of the upper leg and also the butt area. So I'm going to have Gary turn this way and um, what I want you to do is I want you to sit back into a squat. You can keep weights in your hands just for balance and it also helps with resistance. What you want to do is make sure you sit way back Gary like you're sitting in a chair. Okay. Let's have the feet a little bit wider apart just about hip distance apart is what we want and you really want to make sure as if you're sitting either on a bench or a chair because then you have the proper form where your knees are not going in front of your ankles too much. So like this and not like this. Exactly. Okay. Now when you first start squats, you can really feel them a lot um, the next day or the day after. So you want to try to start with maybe a set of 10 or 20 the first time. This is a great lower body exercise that you can do at home or at the gym. This 
exercise is called a lunge, and uh, the lunge is a great exercise because it works almost every muscle group in the lower leg area. So Gary, if you can just demonstrate a right leg lunge coming down, not too deep, and we're going to stay on the right side for 10. And one of the things you have to keep in mind when you do a lunge is that if you notice Gary's back foot is coming up the heel of the foot, and he's not coming too far forward with the right leg, the, m the main important thing is to not let the back knee go too far down towards the floor. Okay. And let's switch sides. Same thing on the other leg, making sure that the back foot, the heel comes up and that you're not reaching, stepping too far out to protect the knees. Well, I've asked Chris to briefly talk to us about the BOSU, which is a piece of balance equipment that might be especially useful for patients with neuropathy and other balance challenges, but can also be uh, useful for other purposes in exercise. Chris, could you uh, talk to us a little bit about this? Sure. I'm just going to demonstrate some exercises that you can do on a BOSU trainer. And the reason that the BOSU works so well for people is that it it makes you use all of your core muscles while you're standing on it. So all the exercises that we showed you earlier today are going to also be able to be done on a BOSU trainer as you become more advanced. You don't want to start out on a BOSU trainer, but you can certainly come up and step up on a BOSU trainer and just balance yourself. And I have a lot of my clients who hold themselves in between a doorway at first just to start out. But the balancing is making all of our muscles work the smaller stabilizer muscles that hold our larger muscles um, together are now being used on the BOSU trainer. So that's one of the reasons why it helps so much with balance and coordination. That's great. And I think a lot of our patients after chemotherapy and other treatments can have a lot of balance issues because they don't feel the bottom of their feet very well. And so using something like this to help increase their strength and help them compensate for that would be a very effective tool, as you say, as they become more advanced in their exercise. Well, Chris, I want to thank you and also thank Misharia for uh, all the uh, efforts you took to show us these exercises today. Once again, we both want to reiterate how important this is to your overall outcome in therapy and consider this part of your treatment and part of your path towards wellness. So we wish you the very best in the future. <music>